Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live. Hello, Larchmont and Mamaroneck. It's Thursday, 7.30 in the evening, time for The Local Live. I'm Kat Galliano, here to connect you with what's happening in our community. Here's a preview of what you'll see this evening. Roll it. Summer vacations are over and it's time to go back to school. And on that topic, our guest tonight is Mamaroneck High School Principal Elizabeth Klein. The facade collapses at one of Larchmont's most popular restaurants. More details in a bit. And what are the highlights of the first school board meeting of the year? Stay tuned. And if you missed the flamenco per performance at Columbus Park, LMC TV has you covered. And our pet of the week needs a forever home. Help us find this dog a loving family. The facade of Tequila Sunrise collapsed right in the middle of the lunchtime rush hour. A waiter ushered the few people that were dining outside towards the inside minutes before the collapse. Miraculously, no one was hurt. Tequila Sunrise owner Melissa Perez released a statement on the restaurant's Facebook page thanking everyone for their support and well wishes. The Tequila Sunrise website says, quote, construction has begun on the new front facade and set to reopen early next week. On Tuesday, September 2nd, the Mamaroneck School Board held the first meeting of the school year. Dr. Shapps announced that there was an increase of 155 students in the Mamaroneck School District. It really harnessed that uh, sense of pride and energy and positive feeling in a way that, that works for us as well. Um, so, you know, that, that's something, another big idea to kind of explore. Um, certainly, professional development. Uh, investing in professional development. Yesterday, I, you know, alluded to getting to know your students and talked about um, how do we ensure that our professional staff really understands what does it mean to work in a diverse uh, school system, in a diverse community, having a diverse classroom. Uh, students with farm students, and there were very immigrant problems this country faced for years, generations. Teddy Russell did it in the twenties, assimilating all the immigrants back then. And we're, it's new to us that the schools are facing it, but it's new to us that you may have to look at some minor curriculum changes in dealing with the new immigrant population that's coming in. I just, I, I've heard you say that before, Jim, and I'm just, and I always wonder, and I don't know, our Latino population, there's no question it's gone. I don't know what percentage of that population is newly immigrated, because we have people that have moved here 10 years ago. They continue to be Latino. They are fully um, embedded in our school system at this point. So their needs are very different from our newly immigrated. And so when we're talking about it, so, so but that's, that's not 1,000 students. We have 1,000 Latino students. 100 might be newly immigrated. I have no idea what that number is. I think, I, I think that it is important to really understand, you know, again, understand who are, who are our students. What are their backgrounds? Where do they come from? What are their needs? What are we doing? What are the gaps? Remember that you have access to the full meeting at lmctv.org. Go online for full coverage of this and other community meetings. On Sunday, August 30th, the Village of Mamaroneck Arts Council organized a special summer dance performance on Columbus Park. Contemporary Latin dancer Nelida Tirado, accompanied by a flamenco guitarist and singer, demonstrated her talent to our community. Here's a sneak peek of the dance performance. Roll it. <laughs> Now that was just a short clip, but as always, LMC TV has you covered. The full performance is available on lmctv.org. Now let's turn to Mike Witch to see what interesting stories are running in the local online media this week.
In June, the New York State Department of Health revised its immunization requirements for school attendance. Parents, are your children up to date on their vaccinations? Kids entering kindergarten must now get two doses of the chickenpox vaccine, three to four doses of the poliomyelitis vaccine, two doses of the measles and mumps vaccine, and one dose of the rubella vaccine. Students in New York public schools who show up without the necessary shots will have 14 days to comply with these new requirements. However, there is an extension for some children and the state does allow for medical or religious exemptions. You can read more at lowhud.com health news. Chipotle has announced plans to hire 4,000 new employees all across the country and all on September 9th. The company is calling the event National Career Day. It says that it needs more manpower and there's been a slowdown of applications. They also claim that employee satisfaction is high and in their surveys, up to 90% of their workers are, quote, proud to work at the company. Interviews will be held from 8 in the morning till 11. Here's the website where you can apply. It's www.nationalcareerday.com. And the patch has the full story. Warren Avenue Park is getting a new playground. Trustees have approved replacing the existing playground built in 1980. Parts are no longer available to make necessary repairs. The company that built it is long out of business. Plans for the new playground are expected to be carried out in the near future. For more details, read the full story in the Mamaroneck Insider. And the Delancey House has been sold. Developers hope to use the property for apartments. Carol Aiken of the Mamaroneck Historical Society had hoped to raise enough money to buy the house and property. She headed the Friends of Delancey Cooper House, but their goal of raising $2.5 million was not met. She now hopes to raise enough to move the house if the developers agree to allow it and turn it into a Mamaroneck Historical Museum. Aiken says that more donations, quote, depend on where people's hearts are and if they understand that this is a one-time opportunity to preserve what is the largest historic home left in Mamaroneck. The full story is in the Mamaroneck Review. And this Monday on Labor Day, there'll be a rally to improve birth it's going to be at the entrance to Harbor Island Park in Mamaroneck. It's part of a national rally in over 170 cities around the country to make birth safer for both mothers and their babies. The World Health Organization has an alarming statistic that out of 50 countries, the USA ranks near bottom, number 45, in maternal survival. So it'll be a rally to improve birth this Monday, Harbor Island Park entrance, from 11 in the morning, sorry, from 10 in the morning till noon. Well, our thanks this week to reporter Zach Brody Stewart. I'm Mike Witch. Get ready for our weekly trivia question and stay tuned because Elizabeth Klain, principal of Mamaroneck High School, is here to talk about back to school and more. Hard to believe, but it's time to go back to school. Labor Day weekend is upon us, and but school has already started. It's a tough change for kids, parents, and I suspect even some teachers. Mm -hmm. I'm Maura Carlin. My guest this evening is Elizabeth Klain, the principal of Maranek High School, and we'll be discussing how to make the transition back to school easier, what's ahead and new this school year, and whatever you want to know about high school. As always, we want you to join the conversation by phone, email, or tweet. The contact information is on your screen. Elizabeth, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it's really hard to believe those fun, lazy days of summer are over. And it's certainly harder to go back to school when it's before Labor Day and still 90 degrees. So, you have any suggestions to make it easier for everyone? Well. As you said, Mamaroneck High School, we're up and running already. We've been in school since Tuesday, so we've had three days, and tomorrow will be our fourth day. So for many of us, the transition has been made. Um, the students, I have to say, despite the heat, um, 
seemed very, very happy to be back in school. I was out and about and um, checking in with students, ninth graders in particular, but all students to mm -hmm. see how they were doing. Um, and people seem very, very happy. So it's a little surprising because you're right, it's very <laughs> early. Um, and in terms of transitioning, I think that um, it's just important at this point to be pacing yourself accordingly. What do you mean by pacing? Um, I think that students, you know, can't do everything the minute that they get there. Um, we sort of ease in slowly in terms of uh, rolling out our clubs. Our teams are already out there and right. um, we just had a soccer game that we won in overtime. <laughs> um, but also thinking about we've pro students have probably been sleeping late all summer exactly getting more sleep so it's important you know to move up the sleep time to, from 2 a.m. to maybe 11 or 10 a.m. Um, I know for sure that last night 9 30 I was in bed asleep I was I was completely wiped out so well, that's we need actually, to recognize that that's actually an interesting question because not only have, are they used to staying up very late yeah. now this getting up early as from everything I've read, it doesn't really jive with their biological yep. clocks. And that must be particularly jarring when they're just starting the school year. It's very jarring. It's jarring for the students, and I can tell you it's also <laughs> jarring for some of the faculty. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, are, we start later than a lot of schools around us. We start our first class, which is I, I always try to remind the students when they are moaning about the time. at eight. We start at 8 a.m. And that's later than it's most. It's late. A lot of schools start at 7.30. Um, but we do have kids who come in early, even earlier than that to, for various um, music rehearsals. Um, and this, you know, this is just about kids' bodies readjusting to what you know going to sleep earlier um, and that's you know there's nothing magical about <laughs> that I'm quite sure that everybody will be sleeping in this weekend and trying to catch up right um, so are you finding that lack of sleep is just generally a problem for students throughout the school year yeah um, I you know I'm out in classrooms a lot so I think lack of sleep would look like students finding it hard to stay awake. <laughs> yes. um, we don't really see that. We don't really see that. I mean, there are certainly kids that we are concerned about. Um, but in general, and, and I know that students don't get enough sleep because they tell me that, but it doesn't then f reflect itself in behavior in the classroom. I think it's more about how tired they feel during the rest of the day. So, okay. I mean, this is, this is a problem, I think, across the country. Right. And um, it's not really something that I think that we're going to be able to solve, particularly because there, there are a lot of reasons why we begin our day early. Which Just, I assume which has is, to do with what goes on in the afternoon. It, goes, it has to do with what goes on in the afternoon, trying to fit things in. Um, and it's probably another program altogether, <laughs> Okay. sleep issue. Well, as we're starting this new school year, you've got four different grades, and it seems like each grade might have their own concerns at the beginning of the year. So maybe we can talk about what to look, what they might be concerned with, and how to address it. Yeah. And let's start with the freshmen who are new to the school, and they're the you know little kids on the campus, so to speak. A lot of them may they may be scared. Is there any reason to be? And what what's ahead for them? What's ahead is four fabulous years at Mamaroneck High School. And the, the ninth graders actually arrived early on Tuesday. We had, this, we had a staggered opening. opening. Um, we have a group of students called Caprice Advisors. It's over 100, uh, think about 80 to 100 12th graders who have been chosen to be the leaders to help uh, the ninth graders as they transition to the high school. Um, so they actually led that orientation program in the morning. They've been trained by um, outsiders. We, we take them oh. away and we do an overnight with the Caprice Advisors. Um, so when, the, when they arrived, when the ninth graders arrived at Mamaroneck High School on Tuesday, they were greeted with kids wearing their black T-shirts that said Caprice. We, we had balloons outside. We really want to send the message that we are excited to have you here. We welcome you. Um, I always speak to teams and I speak to the rising juniors, the rising seniors at the end of um, their junior year about the responsibility of being a senior in the high school. Um, our school 
does have a reputation, I think, for being very, very caring. Um, we did a survey about 16 months ago where mm -hmm. students asked, do you feel safe in the school? Do you feel like you belong in the school? And by far, way into the 94% around that, told us that they do, 96%, I think, for the safety, feel very, very safe at the high school. So ninth graders, I think that for at the high school, the biggest issue is finding their classroom. And that's the thing that they're most nervous ah. about. And we assure them and the teachers assure them that they have a little bit of leeway. Um, it's, we have a six-minute passing time um, to get from one end of the building to the other. It's a hike. Yeah, it's a hike. <laughs> and we have, as everybody out there knows, we have a little um, area where it gets very clogged in the middle. But very quickly, the ninth graders figure out their schedules. Um, and I think that these Caprice advisors, you know, they know them the first couple of days because they're wearing their T-shirts, and then they they actually meet with them once a week for the so first marking period. So they're assigned to someone. Period. Yes, for the first marking period, where they will be leading a um, a workshop with the ninth graders. Um, so we we really try very quickly to make this a small school, even though we have over 1,500 students in the school. So for ninth graders. Um, I think it's really about feeling welcome, feeling safe, feeling like you, you know, we're so happy to have you at the school. For sophomores, I, I, I taught sophomores for many, many years. I, I love teaching sophomores because they're not, you know, they're not nervous in that way that right. the ninth grader is, and they don't have many of the pressures that the 11th graders have. It seems like it might be the most relaxed year. <laughs> I love 10th graders. I love all of them, but 10th grade is a very, I think it's, it's, they're, they're sort of in between and they're, they're just in general, I think, a very happy grade. Our 11th graders are, the, you know, the stress level is beginning to rise. Right. More of them are taking AP classes um, and some of them are beginning to take, well, a lot of them are beginning to take the SATs, particularly in the spring. Um, many of them are beginning to think about colleges right. um, and usually they have a lot on their plate. And I think the key for the juniors is trying to maintain a balance. Um, okay. Again, that balance is very, very important that year. And we do do meetings with each of these grades. Our counselors meet very early on. They'll meet with each of the grades and with each of the parents of these grades um, to talk about what specifically is going on and what do we need to think about, what do we need to be concerned about, what do you need to keep your eye out for in each of those, for each of that group of students. Okay. Um, but they're the juniors, juniors is the most stressful year, probably. I would say so. Yes. And then um, the seniors, of course, are they're coming in and they're very excited because they can finally park in senior <laughs> lot. <laughs> and what really matters in life. Yes. So, um, and they, you know, at the beginning, they're very anxious about the application process. But again, we have an amazing guidance department who really, really helps through the process. So that's what they're thinking about. They've, they're feeling very good about being seniors, right. and they're looking ahead. Well, we actually have a question from someone about a senior. OK. Um, this person's daughter is a senior in high school and is very confused about college. And she doesn't know what she wants to do after college. What advice would you give her? the beginning of this new year. Right. So, well, go speak to your guidance counselor. That's the first piece of advice. And I'm sure they have already done that. We've already had meetings if, if this person's from a Maranek High School. Um, the, I think that being confused about what you want to do is perfectly normal. At 17 or 18. At, <laughs> perfectly normal at 17 or 18. Um, I do not think that people, most people know what they want to do when they're that age. And we also know now that, um, Kids who think they know what they're going to do will do ten. Will have ten or twelve jobs. Not right. like I, not like my like my life. Um, so, um, I think that I think we need to keep on validating for students. You don't need to have the answers. You don't need to know what you want to do. Um, so then, for that student, it sounds like a nice liberal arts school where they would have the opportunity to take philosophy if that's what they're interested mm -hmm. in, or pursue a science degree. Um, and there's so many of them and of all different sizes and types. So that would be my advice. OK, well, there we go. Um, I don't want time to get away without you telling us what's new at the high school this year, because I know there are some new things going on. Yeah, we have a lot of wonderful new programs at the high school. Um, I think that a lot of people have heard about our new design program at the high school. So we have a, 
a teacher at the high school has been teaching photography for the last couple of years, Gwen Bettencourt, and she is now teaching uh, a design class. So it's graphic arts, it's design, it's, um, it's going to be uh, magazine covers, it's going to be things that I can't even begin to explain to you because it's going to unfold and we're going to like imagine. digital it. layouts. It's going to be digital. I, I was just in a classroom today and she actually had, um, you know, the old type that you would have yeah. used for a newspaper. She had bought um, beautiful, beautiful wooden type from on eBay. So she, you know, she's having them experiment with that. The kids couldn't believe that that's how newspapers were laid out. And they, what? <laughs> so, um, so that's a very exciting program. We have a, we're moving to a culinary arts program at the high school. So we have our first year of this culinary arts. We have a chef that we've hired who comes to us um, with wonderful experience and teaching experience and it's going to be a four-year sequence one of the things is that a separate elective or is that a special pro specialized it's an, it's an elective so okay. one of the things i think that is unique about the Marinette high school and that we feel very very proud about is that we do have a phenomenal elective program we have incredible performing arts our pace program we have fine arts um, we have orchestra band choir we have engineer we're starting an engineering program um, I'm going to leave someone out. They'll be mad at me. <laughs> um, architecture, computer science. But kids can sign up and they start in, a, in an art class, for an example, a video. Um, and they, take it for, they can take it for four years. So by the time they graduate, they really have incredible skills in whatever particular field that they have chosen. They don't have to stick if after right. a year of video a student said, this is not for me, then they can take engineering, okay. they can take another class. But what happens is that kids tend to take a class and then want to grow further in that particular okay. area. So our culinary arts right. is going to be a four-year sequence where kids are really going to be coming out with hospitality and culinary experience. And our engineering program is also something. Is that new? That, too? That's new. We've had engineering, um, but we're looking now at a four-year sequence um, with somebody who has got his bachelor's and his master's in engineering. So somebody with really fabulous experience. And our computer science program we started a couple of years ago, um, and that's just blossoming, including a robotics um, element to it. So we and rumor really, has that you have a journalism class starting. So we do have a journalism. <laughs> Our own interest. <laughs> I know. We have a journalism class that is a half a year. It's an English class. Oh, every every okay. senior needs to take English, but what English class you know they can choose. And the journalism class is actually going to be um, it's going to be an online media experience. So they're going to be blogging. They're going to have an online newspaper. Um, so that's that's unfolding as we speak. Okay. Anything else you want to tell us about? Um, I'm sure I'm leaving something well, else. Let's, you, are you expecting the same kind of sports year that you guys had last year? You said four states championships. Right. <laughs> uh, well, we just that's had, the, as I repeat. said, we just had the soccer, the boys' soccer uh, team win in overtime, a beautiful goal. Um, yeah, we're, we're hoping for the best. <laughs> we certainly are. We did lose a lot of seniors in, on our baseball team and our girls' field hockey yes, team. Yes, I interviewed many of them. Yes, I know you did. <laughs> um, so they, but, but they're, they're looking very good and very strong, and we, you know, we're hoping for a great, another great year. Okay. I'm going to pivot yet again and ask you, because this comes up again and again in parental discussions. How involved should parents be in their high schoolers' education or, or in their schoolwork? Yeah. So two, you know, that's a two separate questions, and right. I think that um, both of them are very good. Um, parents need to understand that this is exactly the moment where students, high schoolers, need to start to gain some independence so that when they get to college or the workforce, if that's where they're going, um, they are independent. Um, and you don't want to be that cliche of the helicopter parent. So we do need to release. On the other hand, if there is something going on in a child's life, in a, in a teenager's life, um, and the parent is aware that a child is deeply unhappy, um, a child is struggling in a class, and, and a teacher might not know, or the, or the child is... 
um, trying their darndest and, and not receiving the grades that they believe that they deserve, and this is causing um, some kind of emotional turmoil, then I think that the, 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 it's, it's very important that a parent does reach out, either and to, to the teacher okay. or to the counselor or to both. Um, I, I, you know, we, most important is that, in my opinion, is that students are happy. And st students are happy at high school when they're feeling like things are going well. So as, as soon, on the other hand, if a child walks out of a classroom and calls a parent, and we have, we have this happen, I got a 72 on my history exam, I'm devastated, and is crying to the parent, what I believe should happen is that the parent should say, okay, come home, let's regroup, have that conversation, what's upsetting about this? Okay, now I would like you to go back and have that conversation with the teacher. Find out what happened, meaning the students going yes, back. Yes, I know, I understand. We sometimes have, not often, but we do sometimes have the student leave the classroom and within minutes an email has come in from a parent. So I do not believe that that should happen. And does that mean that after the child has spoken to the teacher that the parent would shouldn't get involved? No, maybe at that point the, the student feels frustrated, the student feels like they weren't heard. Um, then, then a parent should get involved. But we want to have our students advocating for themselves and we want to teach them they can do it. I think that's very important right. to give that confidence to a young person. One of the things that there's always a fine line between is the parent getting involved in the actual schoolwork, uh -oh. <laughs> such as papers. Um, what's your take on that? I think students need to do their own work. And I mean, I, I, I is, if, How much help is too much? Right, how much help is too much is when you are saying, I really don't think this is a good theme in this essay, and um, here, let me just take that from you and then start writing so it. So the first part would be okay, this theme doesn't work? I think if... Or rethink it, or... Yeah, I think that you can, if, if you feel comfortable looking over a student's work, I mean, I got to the point where I couldn't help my children at all in math or in science. Right. They were, you know, it was, it, I, I didn't know that math. Um, but if my, if a child says to you, you know, do you think this makes sense? I think saying something like, well, yeah, I think your second paragraph could use a little work, but not doing the work and not telling them exactly what needs to be done, I think would, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I do, you know, we shouldn't have parents writing papers and we really don't have that happen. We really don't. Teachers really can tell? Teachers can tell. We do a lot of writing in class, whether it is timed writing. In the English classes, there's a lot of the workshop model that's taking place. So um, teachers are working with students on their writing for four or five pe periods on a, if it's a particular uh, long-term piece of writing that they are working on. So when something comes in and it looks very different and um, it's, it's going to raise flags, and um, it's just, it's not, it's, it's doing the student a disservice. We need to be able to give the student feedback. And as I said, I, you know, this really, as, as far as I know, is really not a big problem. Okay, we are running out of time, but I have one last question yes. for you. What do you want or hope that every student knows, learns, or accomplishes by the time they leave Mamaroneck High School? <laughs> um, I hope that every student who leaves Lamaronek High School um, leaves with a burning curiosity. Um, my strong belief is that high school is, it's not, it's not the beginning because it's begun at elementary school, but it's not the end. And we want students to go on. Again, whether they're going to a college or whether they're going into the workforce, we want them to continue to be curious. I passionately want students to be readers. Um, we have launched in the last two or three years a very big independent reading program in our high school. I believe that being a reader makes you a happier person <laughs> and opens up many, many doors for you. So I want kids to be curious. I want them to be readers. I want them to be caring. I, I feel very, very strongly coming from my social studies background that we want them to be good citizens. We want them to stand up when they see something that is going on that, that is wrong. Um, and 
you know, the calculus, the biology, the, the American history facts, yeah, the, those are an important foundation, but it's an important foundation for creating citizenry that is caring and wants to, in my opinion, you know, we want to create citizens that are going to go out and do good in the world. That's great. Thank you so much, Elizabeth Klain, principal of Mamaroneck High School. Hope you have a great school year. Thank you so much. And Thanks a nice for holiday weekend. Me. Thank you. <laughs> and you stay tuned for more community stories and the answer to the trivia to the trivia question. that there's a dog that ignores cats? Well, that's Chuck, our pet of the week. He's one or two years old, house trained, and likes dogs and people of all types. He's super fun, adoring, and he's very handsome. This doggy will be a great friend to first time owners. If you're interested, please co contact Pet Rescue at www.ny-petrescue.org if you wanna adopt this wonderful little guy. Thanks for tuning in for The Local Live. As always, it's been a pleasure to keep you updated with our community news. Don't forget to check out our website for more news and community programming at www.lmctv.org. And for internship and volunteer opportunities, send your emails to thelocallive at lmctv.org. We love hearing from you. And that's the news for this week. I'm Kat Galliano. See you next time. Tell us what you think. In person, over the phone, online. Watch and hear yourself on TV. You tell us, we air it. This is The Local Live.